So just when you thought AI couldn't get any crazier, Google just went and changed absolutely everything again. If you saw my last video on Jenny 2, you know that AI-generated playable worlds were already on the horizon. But what Google DeepMind just dropped with Jenny 3 is a whole different level. We're talking about a new AI world model that can take a simple text prompt, a few sentences you type, and generate a fully interactive, controllable, and completely immersive 3D world that you can play in in real time, just like a video game. This isn't just a minor upgrade. Google is calling this a massive leap, a new frontier. They're not just hinting at the future of video games, movies, and TV. They're showing it to us. And maybe the most significant part, they're explicitly stating that this technology is a major stepping stone towards artificial general intelligence, or AGI. That's the holy grail of AI research. This is going to blow your mind. Let me show you some of the demos because seeing is believing, and then I'm gonna break down exactly what this means for all of us. All right, so let's just start with the wonderfully absurd. Check this one out. What you're looking at right now was generated from a text prompt, something along the lines of an extremely enormous realistic gorilla draped in a flamboyant emerald red vest with ornate brass buttons and an elaborate feathered bicorn hat navigates a series of outrageously extravagant McMansions. Now, the first thing you need to understand is that this is not a pre-rendered video. This isn't a cutscene. Look at the bottom left of the screen. Those are the user's live inputs. A person is actively controlling this gorilla, walking it through this AI-generated world. Every single frame you see is being created on the fly by the AI responding to the player's actions. And what I want you to really focus on is here the consistency. Look at the lighting as the gorilla moves from shadow to sunlight the textures on the building, the details on the vest, the way the hedges and flowers stay perfectly in place as the camera moves around them. This isn't just a random assortment of images stitched together. The AI understands this as a cohesive 3D space. The level of detail and stability here is a monumental leap from what we've seen before. This is truly, truly stunning. And it's not just one style. Look at this, a mountain biker navigating a perilous photorealistic cliffside road. This looks like real GoPro footage. You can see the user controlling the bike, pushing forward, looking left, even glancing down at the bike itself before looking back up. Everything from the dust on the trail to the shadows on the rocks stays absolutely consistent, generated in high quality 720p. The immersion is just insane. But then it can switch gears completely. Here's a firefly flying through a beautiful, cartoonish, almost dreamlike forest. The art style is completely different. Soft, glowing, fantastical. This shows the model's incredible versatility. It's not just recreating reality, it can create any artistic reality you can describe. And the physics. Look at this demo of a road during a hurricane. The raw power of nature is on full display. You can almost feel the wind. The waves are crashing over the barrier and splashing onto the road. The palm trees are bending violently. Modeling complex fluid dynamics like this is one of the hardest challenges in computer graphics, and here's an AI just doing it in real time based on a text prompt. In the next demo, they showcase something incredibly important, long-term memory. Most AI video models have the memory of a goldfish. If you look away from an object and look back, it might have changed completely. It completely breaks the illusion. For a world to feel real, it needs to have a persistent long-term memory. So how does Jenny 3 solve one of the biggest problems in generative AI? Well, Google actually gave us a direct demonstration. They call it the Jenny 3 memory test. We're in an empty classroom, and on the blackboard, the prompt has created the words Jenny 3 memory test, along with drawings of an apple, a mug, and a tree. Now watch what the user does. They turn completely away, they look over at the wall, they pan across the window and look outside for a few seconds, they look down at the floor, at the desks, the blackboard is totally out of sight and out of mind for a long time. In any other generative model, coming back to that board would be a mess. The text would be garbled, the apple might have six stems, the tree might be gone entirely. But with Jenny 3, watch. When they turn back, it's perfect. Every line, every letter, every chalk mark is exactly where it was. It's perfectly preserved. This is what Google means by taking into account the previously generated trajectory. It's not just a video, it's a persistent space with object permanence. It remembers. Okay, all of that was just the warm up. This next demo is where it gets truly, truly mind blowing. The prompt is for a jet ski ride during a festival of lights. The scene is gorgeous, incredible atmosphere. 
but watch very, very closely. As the user drives the jet ski forward, look at this floating lantern right here. In a normal video game, this would be a static object you just crash into. But here, the lantern dynamically moves out of the way. The AI understands that the jet ski has a physical presence and that the lantern should react to it. It's not just generating a picture, it's simulating a world with basic object interaction. But wait, it gets better. Look at the mirrors on the jet ski. You can see the accurate, real-time reflection of the lights and scenery passing by behind him. That alone is an insane computational feat for a generative model. And then he bumps into this larger boat. Watch the reaction. The jet ski doesn't just clip through it. It physically reacts to the collision, jolting back slightly. These are the subtle, incredible details that show Jenny 3 isn't just painting the scene, it's running a simulation. So how on earth is this possible? And why is this such a monumental step forward? Google calls Jenny 3 a world model. Think of it less as a video generator and more as a simulator of reality. It's an AI that has been trained on such a massive amount of video data that it has learned the underlying rules of our world, how objects interact, how light works, the basics of physics. And here's the most important sentence from their entire announcement, the part that connects this all to the future of AI. World models are also a key stepping stone on the path to AGI because they make it possible to train AI agents in an unlimited curriculum of rich simulation environments. Let me break that down. What they're saying is that they can now create infinite, unique training grounds for other AIs. Think about how AlphaGo became the world's best Go player. It wasn't just by studying human games. It was by playing against itself millions upon millions of times in a simulated environment. Now imagine applying that same principle not to a board game, but to, well, anything. You can put an AI agent into a Jenny 3 world and have it learn to navigate, to solve problems, to interact on a scale that is simply impossible in the real world. This is how you accelerate the path to truly intelligent, general-purpose AI. But just how much better is Jenny 3 than what they showed us before? Let me show you the direct comparison. This will make it crystal clear. On the left, you have Jenny 2 from earlier this year, and on the right, the new Jenny 3. We're looking at the same prompt, a robot in a futuristic city. Immediately, the difference is night and day. The Jenny 2 world is blurry, the details are indistinct, and the lighting is flat. Now look at Jenny 3. It's crisp, the textures are detailed, the lighting and reflections are complex and beautiful. But the most important difference is the duration and stability. Watch. The Jenny 2 interaction ends after just a few seconds. It hits its limit. But on the right, Jenny 3 just keeps on going. The player can explore deeper into the city, walk around buildings, and the world remains perfectly stable and coherent. Here's another example. A first-person view inside a spaceship. On the Jenny 2 side, look at the control panel. The buttons are just a blurry, merged mess. On the Jenny 3 side, each button is a distinct, clear object. And again, look at the length. The player in Jenny 3 opens the door and walks into an entirely new, fully rendered room. They can keep exploring. This isn't just a small step up in quality, it's a fundamental leap in capability. Okay, if that wasn't crazy enough, there's another feature that is just on another level. Google calls it promptable events. This means you're not just limited to the keyboard to interact with the world. You can change the reality of the simulation in the middle of playing using text prompts. Watch this. The user is walking along this peaceful canal. Then on the fly, they type in a prompt. A man in a chicken suit appears from the left of the shot and runs down the towpath. And there he is. Just like that, a man in a chicken suit is now part of this world. It doesn't stop there. Next prompt, a man on a jet ski emerges into the shot from the right. And boom, suddenly a jet ski is speeding down the canal, leaving a huge wake. And for the grand finale, a brutish crimson dragon dives headfirst from above, impacting the canal like a cannonball. And there it is. A giant dragon swoops in and splashes down. This is happening in real time. You can literally add anything you can imagine into the scene as you play. The creative possibilities here are just endless. Now, there is one key thing that seems to be missing from all these demos, sound. But this is almost certainly by design for now. We know Google's other cutting edge model, VO3, is already capable of generating synchronized audio for video. So it's really only a matter of time when they combine these technologies and these fully interactive worlds will also have fully dynamic AI generated soundscapes that react to everything you do. 
Unfortunately for all of us dying to try this, Google hasn't given any kind of release date. This is all an internal research project for now, which is a total shame because I cannot wait to get my hands on this and see what it can do. This technology is more than just a cool demo. It feels like we're looking at the true foundation for the future of entertainment, of training, of simulation itself. So I have to ask you guys, is this the future of video games? Are we just a few years away from being able to say, hey Google, create me an open world RPG set in a cyberpunk Tokyo, but with dragons, and then just start playing it? It sure seems like we're heading in that direction. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and your mind is as blown as mine is, please consider giving it a like and subscribe for more on the absolute cutting edge of AI, and I'll see you in the next one.